Hello and welcome back to Low Impact Development. This lecture is a run through of low impact development technologies, show you some photos and talk a little bit about the technologies. I do have a handout that you can follow along with if you want. It looks like that. Do you just list them as we go? That's just a way to keep you engaged if you want to do that. But uh, I'll show you some photos here. The uh, one of the most popular categories is rain gardens or bioretention and it's what it sounds like we run the rain into a garden but it is an engineered system matter of fact we'll later on the course we'll do a technical design example of a rain garden but it's a real popular technology it can be done in a very small area it looks nice it's a, a good uh, public relations kind of thing. Matter of fact, our students at uh, Messiah, we had a group of sophomores who did one for a local park in, in cooperation with the local municipality. But you see there, you can see, and this will come up in a lot of the technologies, is that the, uh, the cuts in the curb there run the water in there, and the cross section of it, here's one that has, doesn't have those same cuts, but it the, you can see the cross section of it you have to provide for overflow and high flow but you run the water through here and hopefully a lot of it will infiltrate into the the local subsurface some of it you have a storm drain to keep it from collecting too much water so it's an engineered system that collects water and treats it and it's very good for water quality like I said it's uh, popular University of Arkansas Extension has a document they put out that I'm showing you here that uh, how to do a rain garden so they walk through it a little bit and talk through it so that's a, a good project can be done on different scales and it's a very popular technology to use Here is bioretention for street runoff. This again can be done on different scales. That instead of just draining the water off, you plant it. You're removing some of the water from the system through evapotranspiration. You're infiltrating some. So you're not just running it all to the storm sewer. You can do attractive little islands in the street there, uh, attractive little plantings there. So that's a technology that looks nice. Here's an on site basin. You can see the uh, cross section of this again it's an engineered system not just a hole in the ground where you plant stuff uh, the interesting one on this was in this was in an arid region and they actually had to water this during the dry season which seems kind of opposite you're, you're doing it to preserve water but to keep it, keep it alive in that arid environment they had to water it every now and then here's another one off the side of a street you can run a little water in there make an attractive garden. Here's another cross section of one with a, a larger tree planted. The species, and this will come up a lot, the species of tree and plants uh, is a big deal in these technologies. They have to be chosen carefully. So the stormwater passes through the system. You, have, you make allotment for uh, high water flow, runoff, and then you hope to get some into infiltration and also use it for evapotranspiration. Here's another showing a, a one where we have an overflow storm drain kind of in the middle there so when it overflows it runs in there so it's fairly simple. I put the second technology as a dry well I'll just briefly describe this what a dry well is is it's not a well it's the opposite you kind of make a well. These are popular in a number of different countries, different areas, and you can run the uh, the gutter down to this well and that'll provide hopefully some infiltration. You can make a simple one with a plastic trash can with some holes in it and you can drain it, infiltrate it that way. You may or may not have some plantings on that. 
Number three is filter strips, and number four is grassed swales. There's a lot of overlap to these, so I kind of included it as uh, in one section here that I'll talk about. Here's some more street projects where they do some infiltration in these different areas along the street or, well, this is actually, I think this is the before picture and this is the after picture, if I remember right from this one. So you run the water over the land. Remember, one of the things, one of the, one of the strategies was you try to grade to get sheet flow. So the more you can run the water shallow over the land, you can get infiltration and you can use it for the plants. And then you're using it as evapotranspiration. Here's some in Carson City, Nevada, a more arid region. Parking lot drainage, run it over the ground, get some infiltration, run it through a, a ditch that we can... Uh, run serpentine through there. Here's another thing. You know, an interesting thought I had when I was watching this is that when I was a kid, we had a ditch in our front yard, ran down the side of the street. It was grass. And then it was, uh, it ran down the street. I don't know whatever happened to it, but it, it, we had a ditch of grass. And then sometime when I was a kid, they came and they put in storm sewers. So they covered over the, the ditch, put in piping, and so now they had a storm sewer and they ran it down to the end of the road. And we actually, my friends and I, would climb in the storm sewer and navigate all through there and, and had great fun. It wasn't too smart, now that I look back on it. But, but then now, years later, I, they tell me this new technology, you, well, instead of having the pipes with the storm drain network, you do this new technology where you just have a, a grassed indentation and you run the water over that grass. And I thought, that sounds like the ditch that we had before we did the new technology. So instead of just a culvert, you might have a ditch. It still might lead to the storm drain system, but you run it over the ground and give it a chance to infiltrate. Here's a couple of pictures of uh, a street before and after doing some low impact technologies, some swales and bioretention. So there's the straight street there, and then there it is afterwards. So along the streets we have this infiltration, and you can make it real attractive. Uh, you, it, they changed the parking, they did a lot of changes on that street. They have, I'll move my frame down here just a little bit. Again, here's some street medians where instead of building it up, we build it down and let the water run off the street into the medians. And from the people that presented this, I got this from a conference. I'm trying to keep messing with my frame, I'm sorry. The, they said the construction details are important, so they'd specify a uh, top elevation for the stones, and what the, some of the contractors would do is they'd lay the elevation, and they'd lay the stones on top of that. So I've heard that a lot from designers of uh, LID technologies, is that you need an experienced contractor, or you need to be working with the contractor if they're new at it, to take care of some of these things. So the finished elevation is the finished width at the top of the rocks. Also, the mulch can be quite important. And if you walk through a parking lot of a big store or something, you might reach down and grab some of the mulch in the islands to see what it is. There are different mulches out there now. There are plastic mulches. Sometimes it might be artificial. But if you're running water through that, some of the, the mulches can float away, and it actually seems like a small deal, but it can be an important part of making sure the system works well. 
This is kind of a fundamental difference in low impact design versus traditional design. Traditional design, you're typically trying to run it all to one pipe. So the store, you try to run it to the storm drain system through one pipe. Whereas if you're going to try to use the water along the way, you run it out to infiltration. So you might run it all different directions out to infiltration. So the objective isn't to just get it out in a big culvert at the end. It's to use it or run it along the grassy areas or ground to try to infiltrate it before it goes out. And with that, I'll move on to what we might call an infiltration trench. And you can see some of these being constructed at the edge of a parking lot. So it drains the storm drain system drain to an underground pipe, but it works like a like a septic tank uh, infiltration where you have stones there and you try to get it to infiltrate into the ground. Very analogous to a, a septic tank drain field. Again, here's parking lot where we're draining it down below the grade of the parking lot. The island is 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 down instead of up and you're trying to get it to infiltrate. You can also build, I think I have this in another presentation I'll show too, you can build storage underneath the parking lot. That's done a lot. That's not really low impact technology to have storage underneath the, the parking lot. But you can do that with infiltration as well. You can run your storm drain out along the ground before it goes to the storm drain network to try to get some infiltration that way. Another technology is a retention pond. Well, how does that look? Well, that's the traditional one, but we can do some different things with that. Here is a retention pond. And again, I said difference here. This is a, a document from Laramie County. The best management practices for stormwater runoff. They talk about the difference between detention and retention ponds and different ways to design them. We'll talk about settling at a, at a later lecture also. If you Google around, you can find these documents or I have them. I, maybe I'll, I'll set up a thing on Blackboard where you can get these or if there's a specific one you want, you can email me. These are some different ways of doing retention with infiltration. And you uh, you got to provide for the overflow. You got to be able to handle the flow. This I mentioned before, load bearing tanks. So you can provide storage underneath a parking lot. And these are widely used. I don't think, again, I don't think it'd be called low impact design, but as part of your system, you can have the uh, storage. These particular ones, these have a lot of, these have strength to them, but then they have a lot of uh, volume that can be filled with water. Rain barrels and cisterns or rainwater collection can be done at a lot of different scales. Uh, rain barrel pilot programs have done in a number of different cities. City of Fayetteville, Arkansas, where I lived for many years, they do these and I never find out till it happened and then they were all out of them. But, but a lot of cities have to encourage rainwater reuse, have done these programs where they distribute or really usually sell at an affordable price, these rain barrels, and then you can use them, and you can use that for watering your garden, and things like that are the most common uses. This is some slides of a, excuse me, a larger project, but done by a family, where they put in storage underground, and then they pump that water out, and they use that. This is, if I'm, I'm not seeing the label on this, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is one at the University of Arizona, where they have a number of universities and other businesses have done this, where they do rainwater collection 
and they store it inside, in this case inside the building, and then they reuse that for a number of different technologies. This is one with the Sam's Club in Fayetteville, Arkansas. I actually worked on this project. I did a simulation for that was my part of it. But there are these two tanks. We collect rainwater off the roof, and then that's used for irrigation. So that can be done on a, on a large scale. And I think I mentioned in the last slide, Walmart said that these have to pencil out. It means it has to be affordable. And I did an economic analysis of it for them, but I, I kind of... They like to have a two or three year payback period and this we use like a 20 year payback period to show that it pays off. So in an area where the, the water is not very expensive, it doesn't really pay off. It pays off if the water is really expensive or if it's an arid region. The rainwater harvesting can pay, pay off. One of the most popular things people think of when they low impact development is permeable pavements. We have several places on campus here at Messiah College we have, where we have permeable pavements. And it is a technology that can be used. This shows some different ways to do it. There's grass pavement. This is actually at the, there's a, as the University of Arkansas, a tailgating area where you drive out on the grass there. And that's actually what they have under there. So it, it, you could call that a permeable pavement because they have some structure there, but they allow the, the water to drain through it. So there's different ways to do it. You can make a, a porous pavement and the water will drip through. There's a, let's do a, a YouTube search for it. There's some cool videos up there. What is brand new, they back up a big hose from a water truck and just spray it on there and it all goes away. I say what it's brand new because uh, I think I'm going to keep a video later on from a from a guest speaker I had years ago and you got to maintain this to get it to work and it's also can be kind of tricky with the the contractor you need an experienced contractor but it definitely can work Here's some different ones. This is from a research site where they tried different pave, permeable pavement. They have these blocks and then they have these porous areas. And you can see here it's going down. You have the drainage layer underneath. And then this uh, pavement has some porosity to it so the water will drain through it. And some of them are planted, as I said. Green roofs are another popular technology. It's Here's one on the top of a building. I forget, was this the one in Vancouver? I forget where this one is, sorry. Uh, one issue for this is that it has to be designed into the system because it's a lot of weight to put that up there. Even uh, if you use a real light base or light aggregate for it, it's a quite a bit of weight and has to be designed for it. But Walmart, they've done one in Chicago because they, they had to, they were forced to. But they looked at it and, and they like to have one design for their stores that they use all over. And you have to design for the weight of that structure. And then also, one of Walmart's energy things they do is they have white roofs and then they have the skylights to let in daylight. And so you don't have that with a, uh, with a, a green roof. Green roof can can be cool that can provide some cooling but there are uh, positives and negatives to it i had a guest speaker at the university of arkansas came and he did a, a demonstration or research system at university of arkansas and we might leave that video in for you also for this class this is a, another shot of a of a green roof it's really cool Matter of fact, I should say, I, about the, when I left the University of Arkansas a few years ago, they were constructing one. Maybe if, if you all are, if some of you are University of Arkansas students, you might be able to see that. They were doing one on campus there at the, uh, it's outside the engineering building. I forget what building it is that, that they, they're using it on. It's kind of at the grade of where you walk on campus. Okay, I'm going to interrupt myself for a second there. I was talking vaguely about this green roof at the University of Arkansas. I tracked it down. 
some information on it. It's Hillside Auditorium, actually, is what it what it was. And by the way, I found this also is that uh, the one of the questions asked to to see if they get a good rating on stormwater management from this organization is do they have a living or vegetated roof? So it get, apparently gives you some points on that. I'm looking at my side monitor. That's why you're seeing the side of my head here. But this is the conceptual design of the green roof. At, this is the hillside auditorium, and that's the green roof there. And after it's constructed, it uh, looks like that. And you can see it there. And that's the inside. Who cares about the inside? We, we think that the site stuff is cool. This is, and then uh, I did find a cool, let's rewind this guy, time-lapse construction on it. Here it goes. And the roof is getting finished up. And then they're putting the dirt down. They're planting it. And then it grows. Here it goes. And it's green. It's a green roof. Okay, thank you. Back to our regularly scheduled broadcast. All right, so all these technologies are built on, I had this on, on, on a previous lecture, on the three different ways to reduce runoff. There is infiltration, reuse, and evapotranspiration. So those words are coming up, and that's what these technologies do. Infiltration is kind of the main one. We can reuse it, the rainwater reuse, and the ones that are planting it are reducing the use of water through evapotranspiration. So this is a short lecture. I just wanted to walk you through some of these technologies to get you a, a visual on it. I will also assign you to watch some videos from uh, Pennsylvania, from Philadelphia, that have some excellent produced videos on it. Okay, so we'll pick it up next time. We'll, we'll get more into some of the science behind this. Thank you.